something a little bit different today. We are cooking up some smoked mackerel dip. I am super excited about this. It's one of my favorites to cook up. So I have everything laid out and we're going to go through it together. I'm going off of my favorite recipe from Half Hitch Tackle in Destin. So if you'd like to follow along with this recipe, the link is going to be put right down below in the description box for you guys. So of course you're going to need your king mackerel or Spanish mackerel and how you're going to want this before you put it in your brine, which is the first process to the smoked mackerel dip, is to have all the bloodline taken out of it and the skin uh, taken off of it. And you're going to want to rinse it and have it ready to go into the brine. So the brine is what we're going to be starting with now and I have all of my ingredients so I will walk you through that real quick. All right, so starting out, we're gonna have your Worcestershire sauce, light brown sugar or brown sugar. It doesn't matter, it can be light or dark. You're gonna want ketchup, salt, lemon juice, and red pepper. It doesn't really matter what brand of ingredients that you're using as long as you have what it's calling for in the ingredient list. So I'm just going to go off of my recipe here and it's asking to do one cup of salt. So we're going to go ahead and get our salt ready to put in our brine. This brine you want your mackerel dip to be fully submerged in. Um, you're also going to want it to set, you know, 12 to 24 hours. So I'm going to brine mine up tonight, let it sit and then um, let it sit all day on Saturday and then put it into the smoker on Sunday. So I have my one cup of salt here. I'm going to pour it into my bowl to get this brine going. And then it's asking for one cup of brown sugar. We're just going to do that one cup. I like to pat it in there just so you know that you're getting exactly one cup of that brown sugar in there. So you're just going to tighten it down, obviously, to make sure that you are fully one cup. I'm going to add that to your brine ingredients. Now it's calling for one cup of lemon juice. I'd say that the lemon juice really takes out the, like the fishy taste of the mackerel. It's more of a gamey flavor, but once you put in this lemon juice and obviously our beer and you let it sit in this brine, that gamey kind of taste goes away. So we've got our one cup of lemon juice here. We're just going to pour that in there. All right, so our ingredients are also calling for, well, hold on one second, my iPad, no, you my iPad messed up, you know. All right, so it is calling for two cups of ketchup. So we're going to take this, obviously. I'm just going to fill it up. It's probably easier to. All right. So we've got our two cups of ketchup here. We're just going to add that into our brine as well. Just going to make sure, actually, easiest thing to do really if you don't have one of those little spatula things is to use a butter knife. So we'll just get all that ketchup out of here. The next ingredient is going to be our half a cup of Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire or Worcestershire, or however you want to say it. It's funny. Can't ever say those words right. So now we are going to add our Worcestershire, Worcestershire, this sauce. <laughs> I don't even know how you say it. Um, it is calling for, really? So it calls for a half a cup of the Worcestershire sauce. And I just wanted to use mine before, that way I didn't waste it. 
you know, the good thing is, is like once you start doing these recipes and um, start doing them more and more, you can tweak it or add certain things in there that you might like that makes it, you know, different or gives it a little bit of a different flavor uh, on your, you know, if you want it spicier, or if you want more of a kick to it. Brine is a little easy. You can kind of put in anything or leave things out. Uh, sometimes I haven't done lemon juice and it's come out just the same. So I'm just doing a half a cup of this. And then we're just going to pour that into our brine mix here. Alright, it is now calling for our one can of beer. So, where's the bottle opener? On the hunt for a bottle opener. bottle opener. Thank you to my assistant. Put our beer in. And then it calls for um, a full tablespoon of red pepper. Like I said, you can always add more. You can leave it out. It's, com it's completely up to you on how you want to do that. You know, and this is just your brine, so this isn't really like the ending or you can add as much red pepper as you want, you know? All right, so we got our full tablespoon of red pepper there. I think we've hit all our ingredients except our fish. So um, we can go ahead and do that here in just a few minutes. So when mixing our brine, there is a lot of um, like red pepper and salt and brown sugar. So you're definitely wanting to get in there and mix it really good. I use a fork, that way I can break up any type of clumps or chunks that are in the bottom of this. So this is my brine. So I've got it ready, I've got that ketchup in there. I'm just gonna slowly start mixing it. You can feel all that salt and brown sugar at the bottom. You just want to make sure that you have a good consistency and everything is pretty much just broken up down there before you put in your king mackerel or Spanish mackerel or a combination of both. Alright, now that we have mixed all of our ingredients up to create this brine, we are going to take all of our mackerel and fully submerge it into that brine. You're going to want to make sure it is in there. That way it can soak up all of that brine into that meat. And then once you get all of the mackerel in there, you'll just want to cover it up with tin foil and put it in your fridge that way. Tin foil on here, making sure that it is nice and tight along this bowl because this bowl is going to go in the fridge. And then the next phase will be taking it out of the brine and putting it onto the trays for the smoker. Alright, so we have pulled our mackerel out of the fridge and it has been brining for about 24 hours so it's up to you, 12 to 24 hours. It, you know, it just says overnight, but we like to let it soak just a little bit longer for that better flavor. So, I have paper towels laid out. It says to rinse and dry um, the fish, but I am just going to pat dry and not rinse it, trying to keep that brine flavor on there for when we do put it in the smoker. So, you're just going to pat each piece dry, and then we'll put it on a pan. All right, I have patted all of my mackerel dry, and now I am just going to put it on this pan here for the smoker. And the recipe does call for hickory chips, so I um, have those right here that I can show you in just a few minutes. 
I'm just going to make sure they're all laid out as flat as possible, not on top of each other, and we're going to smoke them for about two hours. So, have them all ready to go. So these are the hickory chips. The, um, we just get Weber. It doesn't really matter the brand again as long as you're getting the hickory flavor. So we will get the smoker all set up and we'll show you how to put it in. All right, so we're just gonna get it in the smoker. You've got your water and then your hickory chips are already in there. We're just gonna slide it in. We're gonna smoke it for about two hours. So now that we are about to start our final process on the smoked mackerel dip, it is by far the worst part of the entire thing, and that is onions. So um, you're going to want to saute all of your onions up. I already have some over there cooking as of right now. I have cried my eyes out. So sweat and tears has gone into this dip. Hopefully it comes out really good. Alright, so now is the final process of putting all of the ingredients together to actually make the dip. So we have our smoked mackerel that we've pulled out, our Duke's mayonnaise, sour cream, sweet relish, and then of course our sautéed onions which are working right now. And then we can just kind of use some different seasonings to season it and uh, get it to how we want it to taste exactly. So let's go ahead and start the process. So the first thing I like to do is actually take all of the smoked mackerel and get it into the container here. Now that we have it all in here, we're going to use a fork to actually break it up and um, get it into some just finer little chunks. And then that way we can go ahead and start getting all of the ingredients put together to make the dip. Alright, so I have mixed all of this and grated it up with this fork as best that I can. I like a couple chunks in there, um, but it's up to you on how finely you want it shredded. So as of right now, this is what I am sitting with, and now I'm gonna start adding all of my ingredients. So our recipe is calling for eight ounces of sour cream, so um, I'm actually doing double the recipe today. I'll do the one, obviously, and then my other one later, but. I'm just going to half the sour cream and then use this on my other batch. So I'm just going to take half of this jar of sour cream here and add that in. And then it's asking for a full cup of mayonnaise. So go with my full cup of mayo here. And another thing like with the consistencies, you know, some people like things a little bit more dry than others, so it's completely up to you. You can always add more ingredients to it. The next ingredient is our pickled relish. So we are just going to do our four tablespoons of the pickled relish here. There we go. It's working these squeeze jars. The only thing that we need to add is our sauteed onions. So I'm going to go grab them. I just put them in a pan with uh, olive oil and just sauteed them up. Throw all our onions in here. So what we're going to do now is just mix up all of these ingredients that we've added into our mackerel dip. So we are sitting with a beautiful bowl of ingredients. We're just going to mix it up and take a look at our consistency and mayonnaise or more sour cream, whatever we need to do. This is going to be so good. All 
All right, we have mixed up all of our mackerel in with our sour cream, our mayonnaise, our relish, and our sauteed onions. So the last thing to do is just to add some seasoning to taste how you want it to have that in flavor. I like a little bit of kick and spice, so I always add in the Tony's. Tony's literally on everything. It's probably just as bad as ketchup on everything. So I am just going to add Tony's. So I've added my Tony's. I had a little bit of a, uh, a blooper there with the, the Tony's, but it does call for black pepper in the actual recipe. So we're just going to add black pepper, and it says add it to taste, so it's completely up to you of how much pepper you actually want in your dip. These artesian style crackers, um, you can actually get them at Publix or Whole Foods. They are amazing, and you can break them in half, but they are the best crackers that I've used for this recipe so far. I really hope y'all enjoyed this recipe and cooking it alongside me. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more Fish with Brit videos. Definitely subscribe, and thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on more Fish with Brit videos.